السلام علیکم الحمد للہ الحمد للہ اللہ ابدا الفلاک والاردین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء سید الکونین امام الحرمین امام القبلتین امام الاتقیاء نبی محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم و آدم بین الماء والطین فقد قال اللہ و تبارک و تعالی فی القرآن الكریم والفرقان الحمید اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم والعصر ان الانسان لفی خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق رسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد The Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم has taught us that whenever we sneeze, we should say Alhamdulillah. For many a times, we become unmindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to our day-to-day -day activities. We get caught up so much time with regards to our work, sometimes our children. Whatever it is we are doing, we become sometimes so occupied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes very distant towards our minds and towards our hearts. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He loves us. He wants that we remember Him on a regular basis. Allah wants that we remember Him all the time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then creates this sneeze to happen. That as soon as it happens, what happens to the heart of this individual, He says, Alhamdulillah, He starts to think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the sneeze sometimes become as a reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just as He started to slip away, just as you started to become unmindful and all of a sudden you start to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. We live in this dunya and many a time sometimes we are in different types of situations that are adverse and hard. Sometimes it's financially. Sometimes it regards to our health. All different types of predicaments and hardships we go to. And when it is we look at it Sometimes the amount of monies that are needed, we don't have. Nobody has answers for our problems. There is no solutions anywhere in the horizon. And the heart of this man right now, when it is he sits before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he pours open his heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He begs like he has never begged before. He asks Allah because he realizes that there is absolutely no way again for him to come out of the present situation excepting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he throws open his heart and he begs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us of about, about an incident. He says once there were three individuals who were on suffer and they were on journey. And the rain started to fall really hard. And they sought shelter in a cave. And when they entered into this cave, tradition from Abdullah ibn Umar ta'ala and Imam Bukhari has it in his kitab. He says, when they entered into this cave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused a huge rock to fall and blocked the mouth of this cave. And now they were unable to exit. Huge, too big. Despite their pushing and whatever attempts they made, they were unable to make it free. Now they were in this predicament. Life in that situation. And they came up with a plan. And what was their plan? Why don't we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Looking back at our lives. And see which action we have done. With such ikhlas and such sincerity. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to the sincerity of this action. O oh Allah set us free. Oh Allah set us free, let the rock not be there anymore. The first individual, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, my normal habit was, I will normally have my animals. I will go, I will milk my animals. And when I return, 
The very first individuals that I will give to drink from this milk will be my parents. Thereafter, I will give towards my children and wife, etc. He says, one day I went out, and I went out a bit far. And by the time I returned, my parents were already asleep. And due to my habit and my love and respect that I had for my parents... I sat there with that bowl of milk and I waited the entire night. So the first individuals who can drink from this milk was my parents. He said, oh Allah, if you know that this action was done with ikhlas and with sincerity for your sake, oh Allah, cause this rock that is blocking the mouth of this cave to move. As he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rock shifts a little bit. Not big enough for them to escape. But at least the no movement has started. Second individual, he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, oh Allah. He says, once I was overcome with the beauty and lust that I had for my cousin. That I wanted to have sexual relations with her. Because of the plight that she was in. She said that you will not be able to deflower me. Accepting that you pay me 1,000 gold pieces. The man, he said, I worked and I worked and I worked until I accumulated the amounts of money and I presented it to her. And he says, as I was about to have relations with her, she said to me, do not deflower me except in a way that was permissible. He says, immediately as she said that, I desisted, I stopped. I turn away from that action. He said, oh Allah, if you know that I desisted from this action for your sake due to fear of you, then cause the rock that is blocking the mouth of this cave to move. Again, the rock it moved just a bit. A third man, he makes dua to Allah, the third individual inside this cave. And he said, oh Allah, he says, once I employed a man, and after having completed his duties, he did not collect his wages, and what I did, I took his wages, I invested it, it blossomed, it grew, it grew and it grew. Until a time came, he finally came back for his wages. When I showed him how much it has grown, how much I invested it and it became so big for him. He thought I was joking, he couldn't have believed it at all. He says, I convinced him, no, the wage that you left, I invested it. All this belongs to you. And he gave him every single thing. The man said, Oh Allah, if you know that I did this action, for your sake and your sake only, then allow and cause the rock to move. After saying that, the rock it moved. From this tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there are multitudes of lessons that we can extract. However, today I'll just like to highlight about three lessons. That we as individuals can benefit from this one incident. The first of them. Individuals and people who will live on the face of this dunya. They will live lives of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Due to their obedient deeds and their good relations. And the things that they do to obtain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will benefit from that goodness right here on the face of this dunya. The good way that you live, the things that you do, the obedient deeds that you do has an effect on the individual and that person. So much so that he benefits from that goodness right here on the face of this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى Whosoever does any good deed, whether it be from a male or whether it be from a female, it doesn't matter. You are obedient to Allah. You are working really hard to get yourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ What quality do you have? You just don't do good deeds, but you must be a believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says for this individual and for this person, he will be benefited with مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Allah says without a doubt, definitely, certainly, we will give to him an excellent life. 
Commentators explain this individual will benefit and have an excellent life right here in this dunya, right here in this world. His heart will be at ease, happiness will be there, and he will look forward to the hereafter, getting such a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and definitely without a doubt, وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Come the day of Qiyamah, we shall recompense this individual with way more than what he used to do in the face of this dunya. We will give him such lofty and such great reward. Anything of this dunya in comparison to the hereafter is insignificant. Anything of this dunya in comparison to the hereafter, it's insignificant. For the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ad-dunya sijnul mu'min wa jannatul kafir. That this entire world, it's a sijn and it's a prison for the believer. And for the disbelievers, it's a jannah. One explanation of this tradition is, even though an individual and a person may have a, the best life in this dunya, the most excellent of life in this dunya, in comparison to the ecstasies of Jannah, this life will seem as hell. An individual who lives the best of life in this world, the most excellent of life in this world, in comparison to how Jannah actually is, this is hell in comparison to the excellences that Jannah actually has. And that individual and that person who are to have the most amounts of punishment, hardship, trials, difficulties of this dunya, in comparison to what Jahannam is, dunya is like a Jannah for him. Dunya is like something extremely, extremely easy in comparison to how bad and how adverse Jahannam actually is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, endeavor to live good lives and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Holy Quran, He will give us excellent lives in the hereafter. Not only excellent lives, He will reward us in multitudes and He will reward us greatly. These individuals and these people, they did good things in this dunya. And due to those good things that they did, they benefited from those good right here on the face of this earth. So therefore, for you and me as well, always endeavor to do that which is right and that which is good. For we cannot ever lose because of it. One week ago, we all have heard sacrifices of Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. Many of the challenges that Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam had to endeavor and had to face. They weren't challenges that were just rational, but they were obedient acts to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because they were obedient to Allah, Allah never left them. Allah granted them goodness after goodness, recompense for being obedient to Allah, recompense after being obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, live good lives. Allah will give us good right here in this world. Allah will also give us good in the hereafter as well. A second lesson that we learn. Whenever we are faced with hardships, whatever hardships it may be in this world, physical hardship, financial hardship, whether it's marital hardship, you name the hardship, whatever hardship you have, and you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a way out. Allah will transform these moments of hardship that an individual is going through into moments whereby he shall be rewarded. For all of this time, he is going to be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, How strange is the affair of a believer. Whenever goodness comes to him, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whenever hardships come his way, he is still thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he remains patient. He holds on a little bit. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is al-hakim. He is the most wise. Allah knows exactly what he is doing. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put me in this predicament, it may be hard, it may be difficult. Have a little bit of sabr, Allah will transform that same situation into a situation whereby every moment of it you become rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah makes it into a time whereby you are able to accumulate so much goodness during that period of time. So therefore endeavor to have a little bit of patience whenever hardships come. And we'll realize that hardships, they don't, all, they don't last forever. Yes, they do last for a period of time. But after a little bit of hardship, ease then comes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى So therefore take satisfaction from the Quran. After difficulty, Allah says, I will give ease. After difficulty, ease will come. Be it with a little bit of patience. Remain obedient to Allah. Allah will make a way out. So therefore, whatever situations you are in, do not become despondent. Turn to Allah. Continue being obedient to Allah. Work really hard. And inshallah, these difficult situations, they will turn over. Better times are ahead. Good things will come inshallah. And the third lesson that we get from this narration of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These individuals and people, they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they didn't make dua to Allah talking about salat, talking about saum, talking about hajj, talking about zakat. Though every single one of these are extremely important, they made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to their parents, with regards to their relatives, and with regards to society at large, other individuals and people, an employer and an employee. Hence, Allah may explain under this narration, when it is we start to treat our parents excellently, our relatives excellently, and by extension, even society, we give them their hukuk and we give them their rights as well. The boulders that are blocking us in this dunya, Allah will remove those boulders. Those individuals, they made dua to Allah. One was with regards to his parents, the first guy. The second individual was with regards to his cousin, he didn't deflower her. And the third individual was an employee, uh, employee relationship. Because of the goodness that they had with regards to these people, Allah moved difficulties from their ways. Similarly, you and me as well. We are surrounded by these individuals and these people. We have parents. We have our spouses. We might have teachers, we might have students. We might have individuals who are underneath our care. How is our relationship with regards to them? Is our relationship one of excellence? Is our relationship one of goodness? When we endeavor to make those relationships good, then the boulders that are blocking us in this world, the hardships that we face, we will realize that life starts to become excellent and become good. Imagine you work in a relationship with your parents and they make dua to Allah for an individual and a person. Those duas, they are mustajab and those duas are accepted. People many a times, they run to and they come to ulama. And they said, make dua for me, make dua for me. But every individual who has his parents alive, that is one spot where duas are readily accepted. Please them, be good to them, be excellent to them. If they make dua for an individual, that's real goodness throughout their lives. That's excellent goodness throughout their lives. Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. They had many challenges along their way. Along with his wife. Had those relationships not been good at all then they wouldn't have been able to support each other in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Ismail alayhi salam had said, Oh Ibrahim, you ain't going to kill me at all. I'm making sure you ain't kill me at all. If he was like that, not wanting to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how difficult Qurbani would have been for Ibrahim alayhi salam. When it is that Ibrahim alayhi salam was ordered, leave Ismail, leave your wife in the deserts, and leave them and go. Had they been individual not wanting to submit to Allah, how difficult obeying Allah would have become. Hence, the relationships that we have with these individuals and these people, with regards towards our parents, our wives and our children, when they become obedient to Allah and we work to mold them, practicing deen becomes very, very easy as well. So therefore, hardships in the house, there is no more hardships again. Deen, deen takes over. Excellence take over. The good relationships that we have with people. 
When it is we develop those, we mentize, we are excellent with people, then they themselves become soft with us, become good with us, become people who facilitate us, become excellent. Therefore, these are things that we also need to work on as well. Our relationship with regards to our parents, our relationship with regards to our relatives as well, and by extension, even those individuals and people who are general society members, how do we actually deal with them? In the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so much teachings are given for the young to respect the old, for the old to show mercy to the young, for the employers not to delay payments to their employees, for the employees to fulfill their rights towards their employers. So many different things taught by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to engender excellence apart from all of that. Many a times we become individuals and people who we always demand our rights from other individuals and people. So therefore many people before they become married, they read every single book and they talk to every single individual, what does my wife have to do for me? We always want to find out what people got to do for us. What my boss got to do for me? What this one got to do for me? So we worry about what everybody else has to do for us. While that is excellent and that is good. More important is, am I fulfilling my hukuk and my rights towards them? Am I fulfilling my rights towards them? Forget whether the wife is fulfilling her rights to you. As I am as a husband fulfilling my rights to her. I got to be accountable for my own self. Am I fulfilling my responsibilities towards my children? Am I fulfilling my responsibilities towards the varying individuals and people who are under me? All the different individuals who are there, are we fulfilling our responsibilities and our rights? While it is okay and it is good to worry and to want everybody else to give us our rights, similarly as well, we need to fulfill our rights towards them as well. Work on that. For the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he encouraged such type of thinking. He encouraged such type of talk. Hence the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, to give up an argument when it is you are right. It's your right to argue. That is your right. You can go ahead and do it. But to give it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just for unity's sake you give it up. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, this individual insha'Allah shall go to jannah and go to paradise. While it is, it's your right to argue. That is your right. Nabi of Allah talked about, hey, as we call in our language, hey, be the better man. Learn to give up your right sometime. Learn to be a little merciful sometime. And if you were to have these types of attitudes, it will definitely engender quite a lot of excellences and quite a lot of goodness. So from this one tradition of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these are three lessons that we have won. Live good lives in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will recompense us with goodness right here in this world and even better in the hereafter. The recompense will be even greater than we could ever imagine. Secondly, whenever we are faced with any type of hardship, whatever hardship it is, turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be obedient to Allah. Have a little bit of sabr and a little bit of patience. Insha'Allah, you will see Allah will turn it around. Allah will make it better. Allah will make it excellent again. And the third lesson we learn. With regards towards our parents, our relatives and society at large. Work on engendering, developing, creating relationships of excellence with them. For the boulders that exist in our lives, insha'Allah, that are preventing us from progressing and moving forward, they shall also be removed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While we are in this month of Dhul Hijjah, which is Ashurul Hurum, one of the, the last sacred month for the year, for us to also reflect and ponder as well. My life is coming to an end. The Islamic New Year is coming to an end. So many things are happening. When it is, am I going to change to become a little more obedient? 
a little bit better for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For the lessons of qurbani and the lessons of sacrifice, they weren't just to put a knife to the neck of an animal. They were also to put the knives towards our own carnal desires, our desires of sin to slaughter those, to really work on sacrificing ourselves a little bit, to become a little bit obedient to Allah. For if we were to do that, and we were to die, at least we can tell Allah, Oh Allah, from the Jummah Khutbah of today, Oh Allah, you know I made a little change. Oh Allah, I wanted to make a little change and you took my soul, Oh Allah. At least we can show Allah that we wanted to sacrifice a little bit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Forgive us for our shortcomings in this dunya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unite our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Put it in the hearts of individuals and people to forgive us for whatever wrongs we may have done to them. May Allah put it in our hearts as well to forgive people for whatever wrongs they may have done to us. May Allah unite us in this dunya. May Allah unite us in the hereafter. May Allah grant us firdaus. Wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. saw his face so beautiful